So it is with immense pleasure that I introduce our next two speakers. And they are going to give you, this is the Framing of Evidence Impact and Insight session. Uh, my wonderful colleague at NSF, Sarah Kay, who I'm so, I'm, I'm so excited to have her here with us. And when you meet Sarah Kay, you will feel that way, I am certain. So Sarah Kay, um, Sarah Kay works in the office of the assistant director. You'll meet the assistant director tomorrow, Karen Marangel. She works in the uh, office of the assistant director, where among other things, she coordinates the work of the directorate's evaluation and monitoring group. This is a, a group that is widespread uh, across the directorate, and Sarah Kay helps all our programs make meaning of them. She guides evaluation, guides how we think about uh, our projects, guides how we monitor, the, monitor them, and how we approach valuation and the distinctions between research and evaluation. Uh, so she supports staff in obtaining and using evidence to inform program planning and management and accumulating knowledge regarding EHR portfolios, uh, port portfolios of investment. So she's here to help us do this. And I'm just so grateful to her for taking the time to come here to share this with us. And following Sarah Kay is going to be uh, someone that, who many of you know, this is, uh, H. Chad Lane, Dr. Lane. He is the Associate Professor of Educational Psychology and Informatics at the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign. Now, <clears throat> Chad's research involves applying techniques from the entertainment industry with those from artificial intelligence to educational pro problems. He currently advises five PhD students, is PI on two NSF grants, STEM plus C and ASL, uh, these grants are using Minecraft to promote interest and learning in STEM and is co-PI on a Science and Learning Plus grant in collaboration with partners in the United Kingdom. He has over 80 publications and has delivered talks around the US, Europe, and Kuwait and has also won various teaching awards. His PhD is in computer science from the University of Pittsburgh in 2004 where he worked in Kurt Van Lane's lab. And I would like to say that um, I met Chad initially when I funded one of his ASL projects, and this was developing virtual humans. And I went out to the Institute for Creative Sciences, is it? Technology. And at, at ICT, um, I met his lab and the work that he was doing on virtual humans, and it was just phenomenal. I mean, it was just really so, such extraordinary research, and I'm so pleased to have Chad and Sarah Kay working together to conceptualize how we're going to approach evidence and learning at this meeting. So thank you, Chad, thank you, Sarah Kay, and please come up. Hi. In the interest of time, um, I'm probably going to speak for less time than it takes me to walk on and off the stage, okay? Um, and, and partly because some of the things that I think it's most important to underscore have already been said, so I just kind of want to draw a line under a few of them. So Arlene mentioned that I work in the office of the assistant director and that one of my responsibilities there is, is leading the work of a cross-divisional evaluation and monitoring group. And that group, we call it the EMG, supports our staff in um, generating, obtaining, using evidence for program planning and management continuous improvement purposes, and accumulating knowledge regarding portfolios of investment, right? So one of those portfolios is obviously represented by all of you here today. It's the STEM plus C portfolio. And you heard from uh, Dr. James and from Arlene, a lot of information that many of you are familiar with because after all you read the solicitation or those of you who applied under later competitions would have responded to a program description. You're familiar with what the program as a whole is trying to accomplish. You've heard a little bit more about that today. I'm just going to reiterate a couple points. 
STEM plus C focuses on research and development that is interdisciplinary, it's transdisciplinary. It's looking at the integration of computing within STEM teaching and learning for pre-K through 12 students in both formal and informal settings. And through this program, NSF supports research on how students learn to think computationally to solve interdisciplinary problems in science and mathematics. So STEM plus C is supporting research and development that builds on evidence-based teacher preparation or professional development activities that enable teachers to provide exceptional instruction on the integration of computation and STEM disciplines. I could say more about the program, but again, in the interest of time, I'm gonna encourage you, if you haven't already looked at this booklet, there's a page at the very front that provides you with an overview of what the program is all about. If you have a little time this evening and you wanna go online, you can refresh yourself by looking at program description PD18005Y. Yes, that's STEM plus C. And you can be looking at this sort of 60,000 foot perspective of what we understand, what we believe when the program was designed, it sets out to accomplish right um, individually and collectively and and this represents individually right it's a compilation of one pagers and descriptions of projects but as you have heard from from Joyce and from Arlene a lot of what this PI summit is devoted to is moving from the individual to the collective it's looking at making meaning and it's looking at making meaning in multiple ways and so I think I would would say and Chad's going to talk more about sort of these evidence and insight sessions and what they're about but Joyce mentioned the sort of um, collective note-taking facility that you have available to you sessions where you can get together to work with colleagues I think one of the things that I would strongly encourage you to do is you know we we could put all the language from these abstracts into a piece of software and we could generate word, word clouds. We could look at the statement of what the program is intending to accomplish and we could say which of the program's goals are being met by specific projects. But I think one of the things that's most interesting in terms of making meaning is for you to listen differently and to think about emerging conceptualizations of the program you know, different ways of mapping the collectivity of what STEM plus C is all about. And that those are things that it's very interesting for us to capture, not just in some sort of summative evaluation, but very much in a developmental evaluation way of thinking as well. So over the next three days, uh, I'm happy to be joining Chad and a few other folks that he'll be introducing, um, who will be listening hard, um, moving across sessions uh, to note and potentially identify patterns or trajectories in some of the emerging evidence um, from the STEM plus C projects to date. We'll be reflecting on the types of evidence that projects are documenting. We'll be thinking hard about how that evidence can be leveraged to provide valuable insights into program level outcomes and impacts, okay? And we'll be suggesting perhaps, depending upon the input that you give us as, as we're listening, um, different ways to portray the landscape of the program, right? So not only in terms of projects goals and their activities, but also with respect to various audience specific outcomes. This kind of evidence is absolutely invaluable to program staff at NSF. Not only those who work closely with STEM plus C, the Cognizant program officers um, that you're all familiar with, but also others at the foundation who may not work with your projects on a day-to-day -day basis, but they're both interested in and they need to understand the kinds of progress that this particular portfolio of investments is making towards the achievement of the stated set of goals and objectives that we articulated in that program description. So I think without further ado, I'm gonna let Chad say more about how that's gonna play out in practice. Thank you for inviting me to listen in on sessions and I'll be joining Chad and some colleagues in reporting back what we've heard over the next three days when we get to Friday. So thank you.